Welcome back, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the back 11 of round two of the 2019 Silver Cup presented by Discmania and Roland Ridge. We have a great card of players from different companies uh, playing the very uh, challenging Silver Creek Jumbo layout, as it's called. Um, Nate is my uh, co-host here. Nate Perkins, how are you, buddy? Doing great, Brian. Here we are on the shores of Lake Michigan. Jumbo layout's a pretty good name for the course. Jim likes to call it the Super Silver layout. That's what it is. And we are moving into the back 11 right away. Hole number 13. We got some OB on the right. Par 3. It starts out in the open, but then it shoots into kind of a low ceiling tight gap into the woods. It's about as tight as a gap as you can get for how late in the shot it is. Yeah, you'll see a lot of righties trying to throw uh, some low driver Anheusers. Tom's going tracker, and that actually looks... So oh, good. that was I, so close to perfect. Almost perfect. That's that that's showing you right there how challenging this shot is. And Kale's been attempting this shot for nearly a decade now. And that's going to come back. Just a little turned over with that H3 V2. Whoa, okay. but sneaks through the backside. He's actually going to... What? He's you do not have one. a lot of players getting two looks on this one, so that was a great shot. Looks a little bit high from Garrett. And that's the thing. These trees that are guarding the basket are not flimsy. If you hit the, the canopy, you're going to be shot straight down. Yeah, it was pretty shocking to see Kale's disc go through because, like you said, these trees don't let anything through. Yeah, Terry sneaking through a little bit. Gives himself like a 20-footer. Garrett lining up a Sonic toss-in. Kind of yanked that one a little bit, but still circle one. Tom definitely giving that one a go with his Challenger OS. Uh, really, a three on this one is not terrible. If you're not in the trees, you know, within the trees on your drive, it's kind of challenging to get up and down on this one. Yeah, I've definitely seen a lot of bogeys, even some doubles on this hole. Great putt from Terry. We saw Kale card a birdie after finding some finding a hole on that right side. Definitely going to take strokes on the card. Definitely uh, also taking strokes on the field there. Um, Tom's going to walk up and tap in his three. And we've got a tight battle going on right now. Garrett is currently leading by one over Kale and Terry and just two over Thomas. Yeah, everyone really has a shot on this hole and or on, on this course. And um, moving into this next hole, um, it is now 455 feet. Um, dead straight. Dead straight par three. I like this change. Um, last year they had it going over the road as a par five. Um, but I love this kind of long pushing hyzer that it's making the players throw. Oh, and Kale is actually playing this one for for three. He just threw a mid up there to the tree. It's kind of an interesting play to not attack this one. Yeah. As you see, Tom's ripping a force, and I thought he had that one pinned perfect, and, and it looks like he clipped some of those uh, those trees in the left side, but that really is the shot, unless you're trying to go wide with, uh, with a hyzer to play it short. I think Garrett's trying that line. Yeah, he's got that Jeff ass destroyer. Just a little high on that one. Terry looking to also play the wide hyzer, looks like. Oh, he's just going severe hyzer flip. I like oh, that. Look at this shot. Look how straight that one's flying. <sighs> and as much as he clipped that fence on the right side, he still has somewhat of a look at the basket for sure. Little air bounce from Kale. Just butter the whole way. Super soft landing. Like he's barely using his arms right there. He's just kind of like twitching his hips, and the disc just leaves his hand. Oh and yeah. No, little nose <laughs> up. It's it's so beautiful to watch. Tom going with the zone, no problem. 
Yeah, the shot that this hole wants the players to play to get that birdie is very challenging. Taking a distance driver with medium stability and putting it really, really low. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an elite level shot. 420 feet dead straight is pretty much oh, yeah. about as top level as it gets. And as you can see, our players on this card are taking pars on this one. No birdies. And we still have a tight race, like you were saying. We have Garrett with a 17 under, and uh, everyone on this card is within one or two strokes of the lead still. So uh, we have nine holes left here, and we are playing the big uphill par four. Um, this one kind of snakes uphill to the left, and then you're going to want to snake back uphill to the right, and it plays right in those pines up top. So really, play for a righty is a power flat to fade hyzer up the hill. Um Maybe since it is so uphill, playing something a little bit more understable to get it to glide up there, but yep. um, really just positioning yourself for that second shot. Really, there's only there's only one real bad miss here, and that's just early left. Anything early left in those cedars is taking the birdie out of, out of play. Exactly. Thomas throwing a force here, you think? No, this is a beat-up Nuke OS that he's been throwing. Really? Nuke OS? Yeah, it's a, I think it's a lighter weight Nuke OS, and I think he just liked getting it quick up the hill. Whoa, Gary. Okay. I've never seen this route before. He's lining up the huge Annie. <gasps> okay, so he crested everything wow. and actually turned that one over into the right side. I wonder if he ever got that in practice. That would be so sweet to see. I would not doubt it, for sure. It's possible. And if he does land into the fairway, he could give himself an easy approach to the basket. Terry, after clipping some stuff, does get up there, actually. Pretty solid approach, and Kale's pretty much in the prime landing spot. Yeah, it's pretty guarded. It's a pretty touchy green too. It's like up on a little mound, and if if you go off to the right or off to the left, you can have you can be twenty feet away and not have a putt yeah. on this one. You got to be very pinpoint, as you can see with Garrett. And from where he was at, throwing a Sonic on his knee, that's pretty impressive. The basket is right behind those trees. Yeah, and Thomas kicks off to that left side and. We are going to see what he has because looks like about 35 feet uphill. And it's probably pretty guarded, I'm assuming. And that's got to sit down. I think it did. Sweet recovery from Garrett. That's a nasty up and down going uphill with a Sonic on the knee. That's a fantastic up and down from Garrett. Tom takes the par four. And as you can see, the, the people who are getting the birdie looks are the ones that are throwing the simple hyzer up the hill. Obviously, Garrick made, Garrett made some magic work on his shot, but Kalen, uh, Terry definitely playing the hole how it's supposed to be played. And as you said earlier, Kale is 10 feet from the basket and is still trying to find a way to get there. And he does. Look at that mustache. Dude, he's just rocking that stash. Wow. New mustache, new putt. Same walk. Same, same <laughs> walk, same <laughs> swagger. You can tell Kale from quite a ways away with yeah. that walk, dude. <laughs> Hole number 16, 331 feet. This is a tight wooded shot. It is so tight. And it's you can't tell with that flyover right there, but it slopes from left to right severely. And Kale pretty much closes his eyes and throws the ante on this one. He's been doing it for years, and he's birdied it several times in yeah. his career. I've seen a lot of players on this one since the basket. It's deceiving with these cameras. It's way down into the right. A lot of players will try to just rip a sidearm down there, but we also are seeing some very slow discs trying to be Anheuser down there. 
Um, because there are so many soldier trees in this hole, I like the ground play on the skip. Can we define for the viewers what a soldier tree is, Brian? If we have a fairway and there are a bunch of little trees in the middle of the fairway, I would call those the soldiers that are trying to swat your disc out of the air. And there's a lot of these on this hole. Oh, and Thomas knows it's a little early. It's a little love past a couple of those soldiers, and he's going to have a decision from there. Oh, and Garrett just having to pitch this one up. Well done. It is severely downhill. Not yes. worth running unless you are no. decently close. And from a position like this, it can be tough to get this one to settle flat. You see how it's going to land on Heiser there, and he's kind of risking it to not roll. And my brother's favorite quote, it's not a death putt if it goes in. Definitely running at the, this one. And it looked a little bit scared. Yeah, definitely a little timid out of the hand. You could tell from the body language. Hey. And he's, oh my. Run, he's running <laughs> down to his putter. Springy boy. Oh, no. And he misses the 20 foot or so comebacker, and he's actually fortunate that that one didn't roll right yeah. back to him. Terry tapping out his par. Yeah, and you can see some visible frustration from, from Thomas over there. I mean, he that's back to back fours. He's losing two strokes to the to his card right here. And you know, after leading after leading after round one at Roland Ridge, he's back three, four strokes now. He's gonna yeah. be back to the leader. And he knows it, too. He is a very numbers-oriented player, and he knows exactly where every player on this card is at. Okay. So he, he can feel himself falling behind and potentially having to play some catch-up here. Um, hole number 17, 240 feet up the hill. Uh, this one, <laughs> it says 240, but it plays a lot longer than that. That's a full-on rip. Yeah, Probably. <laughs> <laughs> to, be, to be straight up honest with you, you are ripping up this hill, and there's a kind of a tight gap to hit. Yeah, it's an interesting gap, too. Interesting shape. Kale going with that fairway driver, the H3 V2. And you're going to see a lot of those hit and curl. It can get a good curl or it can curl backwards down the hill. We've seen a yeah. few times and it looks like they've mm -hmm. elevated this pin this year. As if it couldn't get any more daunting to run that basket. Yeah. Garrett going with that rock three. Yeah. Yeah, and that's right there. Terry, I'm assuming, would go buzz. But that does look like a driver that he's throwing. Not quite sure what that is. Hey, yeah. Good shot. Also inside circle one. Tom playing ground play with a force. Yeah, got a good little reaction, maybe rolled a little bit further away from the pin. And that actually was a vulture that he threw. And I, I still like the driver play, trying to crash into the hill and slide up there. This is a nice perspective, showing you how uphill this putt really is. Oh, great, great putt. putt from Tom. Especially after missing that short one, it feels good to get the momentum back. Garrett from about 25, but this is no uh, gimme. And with his putt, he's going to have to start this one out really high. Wow, nice he sinks putt. it. A little bit of a dainty follow-through on that putt if you didn't <laughs> see that. And that spin putt, just a little on the left side that time. It hurts to get big putted like that twice, and then have to miss that one. Terry hoping to make the correction here. No. Terry also missing. We kind of overlook how how often you go and you practice putts, and you just go and you practice on flat ground. 
But how often, Brian, do we have putts that are a little bit downhill, a little bit uphill? Almost every time. It's it almost, seems like it, yeah. right? Especially these days, you know, trying to make the greens tougher. Um, this basket on this hole is on flat ground, but the tee shot to get there is uh, definitely challenging. We have either an up the gut, very low ceiling shot, trying to get it as far down there as you can, or if you are feeling, you know, pretty good about yourself, and the wind is right, you can go high flex ante. It actually looks like they put a mando this year, oh. Brian, so it looks like they're forcing these players to go up the middle, and often we will see the roller, and this one... Oh, this one is working out. Whoa, oh, my, my gosh. goodness. There's the basket. That was okay. Garrett's disc. He is down there just outside of circle one. He's going to have a putt for Eagle. Tom's slipping a little bit, trying to roll an XL. Actually, doesn't look so bad. This is also looking amazing. All right. Maybe the Mando uh, <laughs> showing the players some new lines. I've never thrown up the middle here. I've gone, I've mm -hmm. opted to go around and over the top every year just because of how tight. And this, it's not just tight, but it, it continues to push from left to right. So you have to have yeah. a unique shape to really get down there. Terry's shot coming out flat, a yeah. little bit of Annie. That was not too bad. Yeah, it's a good looking air shot. This is the real technical part of the hole. It's a little downhill. It's also low ceiling. You've got OB long in the road, so you really need to nestle this one. It looks like he clipped something a little bit late. Yeah, he's going to have a circle two putt for yeah. a par. Terry puts himself to about 20 feet. <laughs> Tom lets out a sigh of relief and uh, knows he did not throw that one well, but he got rewarded for it. Oh, <laughs> there we go. So nasty. That is not an easy two. I have seen this hole played many, many times, and I've never seen a two on it. That was fantastic. Wow. I also have never seen a two. Kale's going to have to settle for a four on this one. Nice putt from Terry. You know, this hole's 518 feet, which is usually a tweener distance. This is one where Kale's taking a four here, and that's going to feel like a bogey to him. But if he took a three, it was definitely going to feel like a birdie. So there's not really a par to be to be had in this hole, but um, the players are really looking to get that three. Awesome two from Garrett on that. Moving into hole number 19, 525 foot par four. OB all along the left side. Players are going to have to throw a long, trusted turnover as far as they can, pretty much. And the basket's playing down in that cove to the right. Yeah, you said it. You've really got to trust your Anheuser on this one. And what better person to trust an Anheuser than Garrett Gerthy? I think he might be throwing Sky Roller. Yeah, it looks like he is going Roller again, and he's thinking back-to-back -back Eagles. Oh, my God. It's, it's so crazy. It just, like, ruins it for the rest of us because no one else is getting down there. No. It's, it's People not... watching this who have not played this course, that doesn't, get, that doesn't happen. No, it doesn't happen. No one has looks at this hole. Tom's going to try to play it the way you're supposed to play it. I think he went a little bit tight. And he'll be off in the woods on the right. Yeah, with that OB left and the way that this one slopes and this, this tee pad is a little bit uphill too, you'll, you'll see a lot of these discs get turned over early into the woods to avoid hyzering out into that OB. Yeah, exactly. Kale reaching for a fairway driver, it looks like. And if you can get the turn on the disc, it really doesn't matter how fast the disc is that you throw. If you're throwing an air shot, the fact that it slopes downwards towards the basket, you know, as long as you hit the angle right, you'll get down there. And Terry from an awkward lie going big standstill Whoa. forehand. That was a thing of beauty right there, Terry. All right. That was fantastic. Is it a force that he's I would forehanding? Assume so. Terry does throw a lot of forces. And I believe this is going to be Thomas from the woods right. 
Didn't quite see where that landed. Kale getting up under the basket. And Garrett for Eagle. Oh, oh my God. goodness. Did he really just go back to back Eagles? I've never seen anyone Eagle either of those holes, I, let alone I, on camera. Two in a row. Two in a row. That's legendary stuff. And just like, just like that, Brian, Garrett's running away with this. He's five. He's no, now he's five in front of Kale. He's going to be four in front of Terry, if Terry can make this. And he's now seven in front of our round one leader, Thomas. How, how often, in general, do you see back-to-back -back eagles, especially on giant 500-some foot rollers with OB? That's insanely impressive to watch, and great putts from Garrett as well. We're moving into hole number 20, which is a 324-foot par 3 sloping left towards the OB on the left side. Um, if you have a sidearm, I think that's a great play in this hole, but you'll see a lot of mid shots. Um, Garrett probably going rock here. Yeah, the danger with this one is getting this one to hyzer out too much. You see, if this hits with too much hyzer, it can really tail off toward that OB. It's like you said, the forehand can be good because it's going to be skipping up the hill toward the pin. And Terry going with a force here, it looks like. That little hop that he had, he kind of just like pushes off that right leg. And that is right there. Great shot. It looks like a putter from Kale, actually. Yeah. Flippy putter. And that's about oh. how you chalk it up right there. Kicking up some dirt <laughs> on that Mach X. Tom going force here. A little hip fire. I, I like, like that. that. Yeah. Left himself about a 20, 25 footer. Oh, and that was just the That's top gotta sit. nub right there. Man, it's never fun to putt and then be the next one to putt. No. There's all kinds of things going through your mind. This is, you know, 20-footer. He's got to hit this. Okay, he's going to take a, take couple a breaths. second. Definitely don't want those two eagles to go to waste. Oh, no. Oh, man, that stings so bad, Brian. Never like following up a big hole like that with a bogey. Especially when you're putting for birdie. Mm -hmm. And that's really the only way that this this card's going to get back in it if Garrett can continue Has to do things like those. that on this course. I mean, this course doesn't really have a lot of eagle opportunities. I mean, I think about the lighthouse hole, but mm -hmm. there's just not a lot of eagle opportunities. And Garrett's shown us that it's it's possible. Yeah. And Tom bangs a nice birdie putt there as well, and Kale should tap this one in no problem. And even from short distance, he's still still spin putting, spinning it in. I would assume he's just trying to get as many reps in as possible with this new putt, and uh, any chance he can get to throw it, he will. Um, this next hole, twenty-one, as you can see, OB on the right side, um, basket is tucked back in the corner, so very daunting hole to try to get a birdie on. Uh, you'll see a lot of subtle turnovers. You'll see some wide forehands, um, but definitely a tough two. Yeah, very tough two, and it slopes right toward that road. This one needs to come on back. That one's going to be going out over the road. That could curl. Oh, that was smashed. Getting to the road is definitely a long shot. You'll probably see Kale going just straight at it. If that can get down and under that, that could work out. Yeah, again, we just kind of see Kale playing this one for par. He's, he's been playing this course for years, and he understands that this is a really tough birdie, and it's actually, more often than not, this one plays over par. It does. It absolutely does. You'll only see a few birdies on this for a whole weekend. That's going to sit that down. That needs to get down. 
Maybe a little tree love right there. Yep. Looks, looks like, like it dropped safe. safe. Garrett, maybe over the top. I think he's going, looks like a mid-range. Yeah, he put that one pretty high like he was trying to maybe put it over yeah. those trees. Oh, and Thomas stopped just in bounds, but this is a really, really touchy up shot right, right here. Puts himself to about 25, not too bad. And after Terry going OB, he's just got to lay this one up for his bogey. Yeah, as you can see, I mean, I, I think it's I think it's really smart that Kale, even though he is behind, you know, by three strokes on Garrett, he knows that it's such a challenging birdie, and he wants him to earn the birdie. Kale's going to play a nice, safe shot with an M4, I would assume, and is now under the basket for a par, not losing any strokes. Great up and down from Tom. Hole number 22 is probably my favorite par three on the course. It is a super tight shot, subtle bender off to the right. Basket is right next to a huge slope. Beautiful wood chip green. Players are going to have to throw some really challenging uh, flat to turnover shots off this tee pad. Yeah, it really makes for a unique shape. There's a couple gaps that you have to hit, and it's also low ceiling. Oh, a little kiss off that tree. Again, Kel just going going with the mid-range he actually lost the tournament on this hole last year after hitting early left i wonder if he had that in his mind at all oh no wow. same kick and that was actually turning over was that that vulture I, I'm, I think it was either a vulture or a buzz i'm not entirely sure have not played with that kid in a little bit Ooh, and that actually worked out it was headed off to the right into the woods, got a little love. He's gonna have a circle two look, maybe a maybe a sonic toss in. Oh, did that also kiss off the tree? It kissed off the tree, but split it somehow, and now Terry has a kind of a circle two death putt look at the basket. Yeah, that's a pretty severe cliff right there. Yeah, it's a super challenging hole, and you really want to put it within circle one if you want to have any look at the basket from uh, at least behind it. Ooh. Oh, and that's not fortunate. Hopefully it's set. Kale giving this one a look. Okay, he's just laying that one up. It looked like he kind of went like half go on that. Yeah, if he misses it, it goes right next to the basket. He's smiling. He knows. And here is that Sonic. Oh my goodness, he he's just dialed. dialed with that. All right, Terry, he's got a decision to make here. It looks like looks like he is going for this one. Oh, let's And he thought he made it. You could tell he was starting to walk it he off. He definitely started to walk that one off. We both thought it was in. Good up and down from Tom. Yeah, this is another one of those holes. You know, we have back-to-back -back par threes that get birdied a lot less than you would think. Yep. So this is one where, again, a three is not too bad, not losing you any strokes, and potentially saving you strokes on the field. Moving into the final hole of round two, Garrett's going to have a three-stroke lead over Kale and Terry, and he's going to be five strokes ahead of our round one leader, Thomas Earhart. I feel like with that mustache, I feel like Kale could be a part of a barbershop quartet. 
I might have to send him an email and tell him that he might need a new career change. <laughs> anyway, going into hole number 23, um, 528 foot par four, another eagleable par four. Look at this flyover right here, Brian. Look at this this pin. This beautiful red mock X is down here on this peninsula, right next to Silver Creek. One of the signature holes in the course, for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Such and a beautiful pin position. Shooting downhill through a low ceiling gap. If you want the two, you have to throw distance driver. And the common play is to swing this one wide on Heiser. I like this conservative play that Kale's been displaying. He's kind of waiting for somebody else to make a mistake. He's going to play for his safe threes. It shows a lot of experience on this property. Yeah, you know, and I'm super interested to see how that does play out when you have a player like Garrett Gerthy leading the way who is mm -hmm. not playing conservative. Exactly. I'm going vulture here. And this looks good. If this can get underneath it, Oh, and maybe that was just a little too straight. A little bit, yeah, too far to the right. This is a mid-range right here that he's throwing. Oh, and this also gets a little turned over. Maybe get on that bridge. Oh, it looks like it did potentially go over the bridge or go over the creek. Yeah, that creek is out of bounds right there. Terry going safe play. Yeah, the tough tough part about a hole like this is you. it's hard to get a win read. When you have so much airspace like that, you let the disc go, and it, it might do something that you weren't expecting. Especially going downhill, there's definitely wind pockets here and there that you know will affect the disc in a different way. And it Ooh. becomes it then becomes so much more important the angle of release if you get that nose down or if you expose it. Absolutely. And that's why I think Kale and Terry were both saying, you know what, we're just going to play this one for a three. The eagle is a kind of a touchy. Look, especially as being righties, you know, fading towards that OB Creek. Oh, and Garrett actually tried to go around. There is something there, but it is dangerous because it's you're throwing out of bounds the whole way. I mean, you could be you could be throwing again from nearly the same spot. We are about to find out if he's in bounds. Yeah. That's a that could be a big swing. Tom was also kind of pinched and tried going the right way. He's still about 35 from the basket. Okay, so Thomas is up first. Maybe Garrett found a little beach. Yeah, he's not going to be very stoked about today's round. Looks like Garrett is on some... Yeah, looks like he stayed safe. Horseshoe layup right there. But that's he's probably going to be okay with the par if he did... Yeah. Stay safe over there. Great three from Terry. Playing the textbook way of, of playing the whole distance driver, hyzer to the top of the hill, and then shooting one down to the basket. Kale doing a very similar... Uh, similar strategy. Garrett trying to go safe, it looked like, but ended up going a little bit too far right and took a par. So Garrett's going to have just a two-stroke lead over both Kale and Terry moving into the final round. And thank you so much for joining us, and we will catch you for the next round.